from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I'm Father Darren Diaz. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contributions from three donors. The first are Jordi, Margaret, Carol, and Sylvia from Ontario. In loving memory and repose of the souls of their beloved mother, Lavinia Berry, brother Russell, and sister Maureen, and for living and deceased family members. The second is an anonymous donor from Hong Kong in thanksgiving for the Daily TV Mass. Our third donor are Len Gillis and Claudette Smith Gillis from Toronto, Ontario for prayers and their intentions. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, to welcome again God's mercy and love in our lives, let us place ourselves before God's compassionate mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, and since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We want you to know, brothers and sisters, about the grace of God that has been granted to the churches of Macedonia. For during a severe ordeal of affliction, their abundant joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For, as I can testify, they voluntarily gave according to their means, and even beyond their means, begging us earnestly for the privilege of sharing in this ministry to the saints. And this, not merely as we expected, they gave themselves first to the Lord and by the will of God to us, so that we might urge Titus that as he had already made a beginning, so he should also complete this generous undertaking among you. Now, as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. And I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard it said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. This is perhaps one of the most paradigmatic and powerful statement of Jesus. It's sometimes, I think, conflated with the statement that we find later on in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, where Jesus says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. This is, of course, the golden rule familiar to so many religions. In the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, there is a reciprocal quality. There is a mutuality. But in Jesus' statement today, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, there isn't that sense of mutuality. Our lection today expresses something much more profound and much more radical. In a sense, Jesus denies the necessity of mutuality and reciprocity, something that we think is really important, right? a type of equality. Love those who hate you. Return love for evil. It sounds strange in our time. It would have certainly sounded strange in Jesus' time. Jesus draws from his Jewish tradition he says, you've heard it said, and we find sayings like this in Leviticus and Deuteronomy, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Right, this is fairly standard advice. You love those who are like you. You love those with whom you build a community, a city, a nation, right? and you hate those who are not like you, who are a threat to you or a perceived threat to you. You love your group and you don't like those who are outside of your group. In some ways, in some societies and cultures, maybe it makes sense. It's how you survive. In Jesus saying today, Jesus questions the very categories of neighbor and enemy that would have been operative in his time, and in some ways are operative in our time. Right? There were the chosen people, and there were the Gentiles. Right, there were the observant Jews, and there were the tax collectors who were part of this Roman colonial system. There were the Samaritans and the Israelites, right, neighbors and enemies. Jesus questions the very category of neighbor and enemy. Because if we love our enemy, does that person not cease to be our enemy? Does this category of enemy just disappear then if we love them? Now, I don't think Jesus is saying to ignore the reality of a situation, right? Someone may be considered an enemy for a good reason because of a serious wrongdoing or an aggression or exploitation or some other injustice. Jesus keeps the category of enemy even if we don't return evil for evil, even if we don't return hate for hate. Right? Jesus does not ask us to deny the truth of a situation. So how, how, he asks, how do we love those who are our enemies? This is not a servile posture. We don't just forget a wrongdoing. But we have a different kind of relationship with those who would be considered our enemies. 
Jesus refers to the radical gift of God's love that does not discriminate. The sun rises on the evil and the good, the righteous and the unrighteous. This is sort of the madness of God's love. Those who we think shouldn't be loved are loved by God. You know, I think sometimes of parents, maybe of children who've committed crimes. They're still loved, even though they're guilty of a crime. They're still loved by their parent. So God's love is indiscriminate. And that challenges the logic of Jesus' day. It challenges the logic of our day, where we think about who deserves things, who merits things, right? The meritocracy of love. Or we think in terms of quid pro quo, right? In our market exchange economy, I give you something, you give me something back. I give you love, you give me love back. You give me hate, I give you hate back. Jesus says it's easy to love our neighbor, those who are like us, because of our familial or linguistic or religious or cultural or ethnic or social relationships and kinships. That's easy. But Jesus wants us to breach those barriers the, of the us and them, of the insider and the outsider, of the neighbor and the enemy, of the citizen and the refugee, whatever. Pope Francis picks up on this theme in his recent encyclical, Tutti Fratelli, where he speaks of the ecstatic power of love. This ecstatic power of love that moves out of the person and into the world to love those who are different. And in loving those who are different, the differences and the difficulties, they don't go away. But a new type of relationship can be established. Today, Jesus invites us to love creation in the way that God does, to unite our hearts to God's. That's the meaning of that, that be perfect, be single-minded. It's not to be perfect as in to be flawless, right? It's the sense of unite your heart to God's, love as God loves, and expand your heart. Disarm those who hate with love, right? This opens up new ways of freedom new logic, it breaks the cycles of violence and hate. So let us today remember Jesus' invitation to expand our hearts and to love even our enemy. Let us unite our prayers with those of the church and the whole world. Let us pray for all those who are trapped in cycles of violence and hate. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all those who have been seriously affected by the coronavirus, for victims and patients, for those on the front lines of medical care, for those who are working to find a solution. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all those who are experiencing illness in mind or body for those who who suffer psychological or emotional trauma, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Let us pray for all who have died, for those who mourn them, and for those who miss them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, And let us remember our intention for this month. For all those in the Daily TV Mass community who have asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, especially those who are facing significant transitions in their activities, health, relationships, or finances. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Good and loving God, hear the prayers we place before you. We make them in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Amen. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Yes, Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the Holy Church. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. Fulfilling your will and gaining for your holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, with all the bishops, deacons, the religious, the ministers of your gospel, the entire people your son has gained for you. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us join together in this prayer to St. Joseph. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you, God entrusted his only son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage and defend us from every evil. Amen. Let us pray. As this reception of your holy communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. In my homily today, I mentioned the encyclical of Pope Francis called Tutti Fratelli on human fraternity. It's the most recent social encyclical, social teaching that the Pope has published. It's a wonderful document, even though it's a bit long. 
and it's available online. So if you Google Tutti Fratelli or you go to the Vatican website, you'll find Pope Francis' most recent social encyclical. It's on human relationships and, and sort of a vision, a dream for how the world might be. It is a long document. Now, I, I ordered the booklet form because it's easier to read each of the chapters. But I would encourage you all, if you have time, to avail yourself of Tutti Fratelli. It's a wonderful new document. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.